Hello, I'm Nito Cobain. Welcome to Side by Side. My guest today is the definition of the American dream. Overcoming a difficult childhood in Richmond, California's public housing, all the way to serving as the top executive of Mark Cuban's NBA team as the CEO of the Dallas Mavericks. We're talking about painful adversity, poignant success, and the purposeful joy of leadership and helping others with my friend, Cynthia Sint Marshall. Funding for Side by Side with Nito Cobain is made possible by... Here's to those that rise and shine, to friendly faces doing more than their part, and to those who still enjoy the little things. You make it feel like home. Ashley Home Store, this is home. The Bud Group is a company of everyday leaders making a difference by providing facility solutions through customized janitorial, landscape, and maintenance services. Coca-Cola Consolidated is honored to make and serve 300 brands and flavors locally. Thanks to our teammates. We are Coca-Cola Consolidated, your local bottler. St. Marshall, welcome to Side by Side. I'm so glad to see you. I'm going to begin this interview in a way I've never begun before. Okay. I'm just going to give you some numbers. 94804. Oh, that means a lot. That's the zip code in Richmond, California. It's where my story began. Yes, uh, I arrived there when I was three months old. Parents left Birmingham, Alabama. And um, that's where we ended up. And there were some good things that happened there, but also... Uh, some bad things that happened there. Uh, poverty, domestic violence, broken nose in high school at the hands of my father, left us uh, when I was 15 years old with nothing. Still in 94804 though, we, we made a comeback because my mother said zip code doesn't matter, education does. Mm. And since you have gone from there to the mountaintop, you have served as president of AT&T North Carolina? You have served as head of HR for AT&T everywhere. You today are the chief executive officer of Mark Cuban's Dallas Mavericks. And in between and beyond, there are hundreds of things that you've done to make this world a better place. How does one go from 94804 to where you are today? It's the village. It's the village. It's the village deciding that uh, 94804 is an okay zip code uh, to make sure someone gets a great education. Uh, the village decided that uh, my zip code didn't matter, and so I landed on Berkeley's campus, had all kinds of opportunities uh, to actually lead. You got a bunch of scholarships, too, did you not? I got five offers? full scholarships to the College yeah, five, of My Choice. Five offers to go to school, yes. tuition free, yes. the college, what, what, what were they, Berkeley? Oh, to the, the College three. of My Choice. I mean, so all the Ivy Leagues were coming at me. Stanford, I mean, so the five scholarships mm -hmm. said you can go anywhere so you want to go. So safe to assume you were gifted academically. And your yes. intelligence was off the charts. Yes, I skipped That the helped a little bit. I skipped the fifth grade. So, yes, I was, uh, I was smart. I'm still smart. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, you're smarter. You're wiser today. I'm wiser. I'm you, wiser you today. You took intelligence and turned it into wisdom. So, yes. so Sin, just run me through this because I want to understand the chapters of your life. Yes. You started with poverty and some abuse. And you went to the mountaintop, but along the way, you traveled and you passed a lot of guideposts. Yes. What, what were some of those guideposts, good and bad? Okay, well, I think about when the situation when my father left us and my mom just told us, I mean, we were all crying and devastated and we walked in and she just said, God will take care of us. And she just had us focus on school. Education was everything. She put two books in my hand a math book in one hand and a Bible in the other, mm. and said, if you keep your head in these two books, you will get out. Uh, you will get out of poverty, you will be okay. So she didn't let us dwell on our circumstances. There were a lot of things happening in our neighborhood that you know she wouldn't let us do, uh, but she just kept us very focused on school and church and on activities and on being leaders and making the right decisions, even as kids. And so in high school, I was involved in everything because I had teachers, faculty members, educators that all just wrapped their arms around me. 
uh, which is why I always think education is just a great equalizer. And then when I got to Berkeley, I remember my first day on campus looking at the big buildings and I was a little bit nervous and I just heard these words that were always repeated in my life. Dream, focus, pray, and act. So, Dream, focus, pray, and, and act. act. Those were the four words. And I saw I had big order. dreams in that order. Mm. And so my big dreams and the big dreams of other people got me on that campus that day. So I'm this kid from 94804 on Berkeley's big campus looking at these big buildings. And I thought, okay, I gotta focus. I gotta be big. I gotta do this. Mm -hmm. This is my future. Mm -hmm. I put my boyfriend on hold for the whole time I was in college, the whole time, mm -hmm. and said, I gotta focus. Tell me about your boyfriend, because I know the story. <laughs> My boyfriend called me my first week on campus and said he had changed schools and he had moved schools. He was three hours away from home now near me. He said, I'm across in San Francisco at San Francisco State University uh, because I want to be closer to you. Surprise. And I said, surprise back, buddy. I'll call you when I graduate. Wow. I said, because. Speaking of focus. I said, I, I got to handle my business. I mean, those words, that's why it's important to put the right words yes. in young people. And so I said, I got to focus. I got to stay on track. I'm at Berkeley now. I know what this means for my future. And I'll call you when I graduate. And so the day I graduated, I called him. And, and he was still there? He was still there. And I was told him. Was he waiting for you? No, he wasn't. He was engaged. He <laughs> told me. I, I was all excited telling him I, I just graduated. He said, I haven't talked to you in four years. I said, I told you I was going to call you when I graduated. <laughs> I said, I just graduated at, at 2 o'clock. It's 3 o'clock. My mom's having a party at six, still in the project, still at 94804. I said, but you gotta come to the party. And he said he couldn't because he was engaged. And now I've been married to him 38 years. <laughs> <laughs> he came to the party. Is that perseverance? Is that, what is that, oh, love? Oh, he came to the party. I think it was love, I guess. Yes. yes. I guess, so he came to the party. And then of course we started our journey and got married two years later. Yes, and, and that journey has been difficult since. Yes, yes. We. Uh, uh, we said we immediately wanted to have kids. You know, I had this little plan where I go to college, then I'm going to get out and get married two years later. So did that and then start a family. And we ended up having, we spent 10 years having miscarriage after miscarriage, second trimester miscarriages. Mm. And then we had a daughter, finally, who was born mm -hmm. uh, four months premature. And she died at six months old. Mm. Special K. Yeah, her name was uh, Carolyn with a K. Mm -hmm. And... It taught us a lesson. First of all, it taught us that she was here for a reason uh, because the, the hospital learned a lot from her condition mm -hmm. and actually figured out a cure for her condition. Wow. And that was exposed, mm -hmm. okay? So, so she was here for a reason. Uh, but also to teach us, to teach me, that I'm not in control, that the Lord had another way to make our family. And so now we have four beautiful adopted children mm -hmm. who all have their own stories, their own abuse, abandoned, neglect stories. And that's my family. And wow. that's my family. Wow. Yes. Um, since you, you, you literally climbed the ladder of success with AT&T, yes. a huge company. Um, you did it uh, as a female, and you did it as a woman of color, mm -hmm. and you didn't pay attention to either one of those two facts. You just kept moving on up. Well, I, I always see it as a double blessing. <laughs> not, yes. Not everyone sees it that way. Yes. I mean, so, so it's, I had a 36 year career, but it wasn't, every day wasn't Sunday. I mean, there were some people who had difficulty uh, embracing a woman, embracing uh, a black woman, so. How did you do it? it was, did you do it by, by sheer force of your accomplishment and performance? Did you do it by building great relationships? What, what is it that, what is it that causes one to do what you've done and others are unable to do the same? Okay, so, so it's all of what you said, okay? It's relationships, having mentors and sponsors and people who believe in you, uh, but also having people who will teach you the rules of uh, engagement, teach you corporate culture, because obviously this is all, all new to me, so mm -hmm. you have to have somebody uh, to they do that. They didn't teach you that in 94804. No, they did not. Uh -huh. No, they did not. And so someone to tell you how to take your career into your own hands. I remember I had a boss one time. He goes, they used to call me Cindy back then. He says, Cindy, what are you going to do next? I just started an engineering job. And I said, I don't know, Mr. McBride. Your job, my job is to do my current job because Results matter, that's number one. Yes. Deliver the goods, results matter. I said, and my job was to deliver the goods. Your job is to deliver my next job. 
you will tell me what to do next. He said, oh, Cindy, follow me to my office. And so I followed him and he had his whiteboard up and he started laying out a career path for me. Wow. He said, and what I want you to know is, he says, never leave your career to anyone else. You have to take charge. Yes, you do have to deliver the goods, and yes, you do have to focus on your job, but you also have to think ahead, and you have to take ownership, too, mm -hmm. for your career. Mm -hmm. And I was, I guess, 23 years old at the time. Did you understand what he was saying? Yes, because he laid it out for me. And your mom, before that, had laid the foundation for you. Exactly, exactly. So I knew exactly what he was saying. He was just basically saying, don't go overboard. Mm -hmm. Don't just put it in somebody else's hands. Be accountable. Yes. Be accountable. And which is a lesson that I have learned in my life with not just work, but everything. You have to be accountable. Mm -hmm. And then you have to take action. And that's what dream, focus, pray, act. That's what my mom taught us. Things aren't just going to come to you. You have to take action. And that's also what he was telling me. And so from then on, we laid out the career path. And I said, OK, what exactly do I want to do in this company? I want a job where I can lead big teams. Mm -hmm. I want technical jobs because mm -hmm. it's a technical company. Then I want non-technical. I want to go out and recruit people. So we laid out this whole path for me, uh, and it, it, it worked out. And there were some bumps along the way. Of course. But then there were some great pluses and surprises along the way. So what are the two or three pieces of advice you would give young people today? The world has changed, and it's changed a lot. Um, the world is more, you know, as, as Tom Friedman said in his book, um, uh, the world is flat. Yes. Uh, today you could work with this company, but like AT and T is a is a is a global company in many ways, and um, so there's more competition. There's more demands. Uh, mm -hmm. Young people generationally have different needs and aspirations and right. goals and fears. Uh, so, what are the two or three pieces of advice that you would say to someone? Do these things if you want to achieve an extraordinary career, extraordinary life, a balanced life. Well, I would say you have to develop a very strong work ethic. No shortcuts. What is a strong, define a strong yeah. work ethic. No shortcuts. You might be up working late when other people are asleep. Mm -hmm. You have to prepare. You can't just rely on other people. There are some things you might not think you should do. Maybe you don't think you should prepare that uh, PowerPoint presentation. Maybe you think somebody else over there should, no. You have to do it. Mm -hmm. I still do that right now. But since you, t today, you are leading an organization that has employees, has players and employees and, and back of the room operators and all of that. Um, you think you could say that to young people today and say, uh, your work ethic has to be your long hours, give it all it takes, be responsible for your performance? Or do you think generationally people have different outlooks on what work is and where work uh, you know, is placed in their priorities. You have to work hard. You do have to put in the time. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not maybe sitting at a desk. Maybe it, maybe it looks different mm -hmm. these days, but you can't just give it one or two hours and think somebody else is going to put in the rest of the mm -hmm. time. Yes. And, and you learn in that process. Yes. You learn in that process, and that's what I always wanted to do. So some things are constant. Uh, mm -hmm. So to have that work mm -hmm. ethic, but also keep a balance, keep a balanced life. Mm -hmm. uh, integrate your personal and your professional. Mm -hmm. Get in touch with your passion. Kind of know what your purpose is. And sometimes the passion and purpose won't always come together, mm -hmm. but you just keep trying until you have a job and an environment where we'll all come together. And then be open because we can lay out a plan, but you don't really know what's around that mm -hmm. corner. And all of a sudden some opportunity will come up, like me moving to North Carolina or me moving uh, to Dallas. Some opportunity will come up and then you'll realize, wow, because of your work ethic, because of your relationships that you have, where you can call on people to help you with things, because of your uh, intellect, because of your passion, you have a foundation to actually say yes to this opportunity that's so new and that you may not even know the subject matter, mm -hmm. like me not knowing the business of basketball. Yes. But I knew people. I knew how to lead. I practiced my three L's of leadership, listen, learn, and love. So listen to the people, learn from the people, love the people. That's how I... What has been the most um, challenging obstacle for you with the Dallas Mavericks? I think the most challenging thing has been to institutionalize a new inclusive culture, a values-based culture, mm -hmm. while also purging an old culture. And how do you do that? Well, you do it with a few ways. It starts with a vision. 
and you lay out what the vision is, you make that very clear for the people. And so day one, I said our vision is that the Dallas Mavericks would set the global standard for diversity and inclusion, workplace culture, period. Mm -hmm. We would set it, not just in the NBA, but we would set that standard, period. Mm -hmm. Then I laid out a set of values. This spells crafts, character, respect, authenticity, fairness, teamwork, and safety. How do you teach character? How do you monitor character? Well, first of all, you role model it. That's the first thing you have mm -hmm. to do. And what I say is you, there's a difference between doing things right, which we often learn, mm -hmm. especially in school, and doing the right thing. So you have to role model for people doing the right thing, and you have to talk about it. You have to give examples, and I give, as you know, tons and tons of examples of uh, where I learned about character and what that looks like. And so then we celebrate it. We celebrate it in our workplace. I see. When we do. You the announce right it, you talk about it. Oh, we you, talk about it. Yeah. All the time. You reward people for oh, yes. the good things. Yes, we have our character awards, mm -hmm. all that. Um, and then the safety piece is physical and emotional safety. And so we kind of lay out, we talk about it, we have our sessions, what it is, what it looks like, what it looks like in all aspects of mm -hmm. our, our business. And this is for the staff? Yeah, this is for, 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 for the staff, the players, the entire organization. So the players actually gather in staff meetings with you? Or they do separate meetings? We do, we do separate. Separate meetings. And so we roll out the values and our code of conduct and yeah. all that. Um, and, and, and we put a code of conduct in place. We kind of, we, we, we laid it out in writing. What does values-based employment mm -hmm. looks, look like? I mean, you have to give it to people. You yes. have to show it to them. Yes. And you have to reward it, but then you also have to dismiss it when uh, someone is not, uh, you know, Showing. Doing what they're going to be doing, yeah. And you know we did that. Yes. We, we had to let some people go. Yeah. We had to let people know we were serious. Mm -hmm. And so it was the vision, it was the values, it was a 100-day plan uh, that focused on modeling zero tolerance, a women's agenda. And you came out of retirement to do this. Yes, yes. What, why? <laughs> what, what made you get out of You were happy. Yes. You were having retirement. You were going to travel and change the world. And all of a sudden, you had to go and take care of some issues at, at the Dallas Mavericks. Because my own words came back to haunt me. I wrote a blog post the morning, it just so happened the morning that Mark Cuban called me, I wrote a blog post called Impact because I was being impacted by these teenagers who were protesting in Parkland, Florida, and then by the Reverend Dr. Billy Graham who had passed away at 99 years old, mm -hmm. who, had, who had been a big influence in my life. Mm -hmm. And so I said, and here I am age-wise smack dab in the middle. They're having an impact on me. What impact am I going to have? So I wrote a blog post that morning. Wow. And then I got this call. And Mark Cuban saw the blog and called no, you? No, I just, I put it aside. And then later I got the call from Mark Cuban. I didn't know him at the time, believe mm -hmm. it or not. I went to see him. He's telling me what was going on. He was sincere about a culture transformation, said he had gotten my name and all that. Walked out of his office, two women stopped and talked to me and told me their stories. And between what Mark was telling me and why he thought I was uniquely qualified to do it and what these women were telling me, and then it hit me. My words came back. I said, impact. Mm -hmm. There's an opportunity to really impact this situation. Make and a for difference. some reason, yeah. I'm being the one chosen to mm -hmm. make a difference here. Tell me how you negotiate your salary with Mark Cuban. Well, when I first sat down with him and at the end of the conversation, he said, okay, so what will I have to pay you? I said, well, I haven't decided that I'm going to do But it's going to be a lot. I said, yes. I said, I'm in retirement, so I'm coming out of retirement, and I have a lot of things I'm going to have to put on hold. I had just started my consulting company. Yes. So I said, so there, and I'm, I'm going to be focused 100%, so there's a lot of stuff I'm going to have to say no to. So I got to quantify all that, and then I just wrote down a number. Did you get what you wanted? And he said, I'm not sure I play, pay some of the folks here that. I said, but they're not me. They don't call you sent the spirit for nothing. Right. I said, I said that that's not that oh, you, you're asking me to come and do some heavy lifting here. Yes. And yes, he gave me what I asked for. Wow. Yes. Where did you get sent the spirit? Uh, well, sent the sprint, sent the sprint. Oh, sent the sprint. Yes. yes sent the sprint because I ran track. Yes. I oh, ran track for like 10 that. years oh. growing up from probably age seven until 17. I didn't run in college though. I was totally focused on academics and I had an academic scholarship. Mm -hmm. Yes. But I was quick. You were the first in your family to go to, to graduate from college. Yes, correct. And what did you major in? Business administration. Yes. I started out as an engineering major, straight A's, and took one business class and said, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. Wow. I'm supposed to go That's in. That's quite a shift, like, engineering 
to business. It is a shift, but then it's not a shift. Okay, I'm very numbers focused, very disciplined. Uh, I've got to have my equations laid out, so I still use all my engineering and all mm -hmm. my math every single day, every single day. Mm -hmm. uh, some, some stuff is just foundational. Just run us through your daily routine to the extent that you're comfortable. You are uh -huh. full of life. Yes. I've never told you. I've never known you when you were not excited and spirited. <laughs> you want to change the world. You're being kind and calm today because we're on television. Yeah, you um, know I'm wild. Okay. Yes, but yes. you are. You are a go-get 'em kind yes, of a I am. creature. I am. And I want to know what your day looks like. What time do you get up? What do you do? Okay. What do you eat for breakfast? What happens when things don't go your way? What happens at the end of the day when you're tired? Mm -hmm. uh, what happens when somebody whines to you and how you deal with it? Okay, all right, so I get up about 5.45, and the first thing I do, I go through the house and I lift all the blinds. I mean, I just, I have to bring the light in. Okay. I, and I'm not one of those, that I don't go to bed with all the stuff up because mm -mm, I don't want anybody looking at my house. Okay, I see. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I lift all the blinds, bring the light in, then I go into my prayer closet, so I have a little place in my house. I see. Where I go in, I listen to my normal songs like, you know, Above the Day and all that. So I got my little songs, my spirituals I listen to. Say my prayer, I got a little wall there, I've got names up there, so people that I pray for. do that every for, day? Yes, every day. Every day. Every day. Mm -hmm. uh, so I do all that because- That's your mom's advice, It's Dream. my mom's, yeah, and you just- Focus, math, book, pray, and the Bible. act. Math, book, and have to pray, okay? And so I do that. And then I've already printed out like my schedule for the next day and it's also on my phone. So I just kind of refresh on what I know I need to get done. Then I get all mm -hmm. uh, dolled up and beautiful. And if I'm working at home, I go into my home office just so like I'm at work or if I'm going to the office, then, you know, I'm, I'm heading into, mm -hmm. to down, you know, to, you know, where the arena is. And either it's I'm having a one-on-one -on -one with one of my team members or I'm meeting with one of the employees because I still like to not just meet with my executive uh, leadership team, but mm -hmm. everybody else. Uh, I'm talking to uh, sponsors, so I'm helping my folks work sponsorship deals. Uh, then we look at our marketing activities. And right now, because we're preseason, we're getting all of our preseason stuff lined up. Mm -hmm. uh, I will talk to our new general manager and our new coach. Like right now, we're doing a lot of work around values. And Do they report up to you? No, they, they actually report directly to Mark. I see. But they call me boss lady. Uh-huh. Okay, they call me boss lady. So they, I guess they think they report to me, but they yes. don't. I'm just in there trying to help them mm -hmm. uh, get acclimated and all that. And then let's see, uh, we look at our, like right now I'm hiring a chief technology officer. Uh, so this week I've spent a lot of time in interviews. Mm -hmm. uh, so working on my staff kind of things. And then we do a lot in the community. Uh, so I'm on boards and all that uh, representing the Mavs. Uh, so I might be on a call with the Texas Women's Foundation. Uh, I was at a mall the other day, early in the morning, uh, because we're taking pictures and doing a whole video shoot. Yeah. So I do a lot of community stuff well. As well. I mean, I know, I know the time um, that I owe you a favor for because you, you were going to interview uh, uh, former President George W. Bush. Yes. And because we needed you to do something with us, you gave that up and you got somebody else to do it. Uh, and you're known, this is your reputation, Sint, that you, you stand up for your friends, you're there when you're needed, yes. you give what's you expected of you and then some, yes. and you're modest about how you got to where you, where you are, but you've, you've paid your dues, you've earned your wings, uh, mostly you've earned the respect of other people, but your leadership, and that's why you've won so many awards and so many recognitions. What's next for you? Whew, I think I'm going to contribute to boards, so I'm going to be on corporate boards, mm -hmm. and, and it's not even about, you know, the money or just having my name out there. It's about wanting to help these corporations be better, mm -hmm. uh, to help them really embrace kind of the, 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 the students that are coming in, the diversity that's coming in, so to really try to make a difference mm -hmm. around corporate governance and that kind of thing. Uh, so I'm going to do boards. I'm going to write a book. I'm actually writing a book right now. What would the book be about? Uh, the first one is going to be about my cancer journey. because Your cancer journey. Cancer, because 10 years ago, I was going through brutal chemotherapy mm -hmm. uh, right about now. Mm -hmm. Well, I had just ended it right about now. So I'm going to write about that journey. I'm going to write about going through stage three, colon cancer, almost stage four, and that whole journey and the people who were on it with me. Uh, and, and I was chosen for that journey. And so I want to write about it. Yes, and so Did we're going to do that. Did you have doubt through that period of time? Oh, yes, yes. There's nothing like hearing those words 
sit down. I have something to say that's bad and significant. Mm -hmm. You have stage three. What helped cancer. you through it, Sin? Uh, my faith, definitely my faith. I think a sense of optimism uh, because I mean, I knew I was going to be okay. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom, her words were, this is for God's glory. So you're going to be okay and it's going to be public. So let's get ready. Those were my mom's words mm -hmm. when I told her I had cancer. So she just let me know right then we're going to be okay. So I'm going to write a book about that. Then I want to write a book about motherhood, about raising children, mm -hmm. adopted children. Uh, I want to write a book about corporate America mm -hmm. and being a woman and a black woman. The amazing thing is that you have experienced all that. So you will speak yes. with a sense of authority about subjects that you know that you've traveled. Since yes. we could talk for hours. You, yes. Your life is an amazing story. It is the American dream at its best. You continue to do amazing things, not only in your profession, but beyond. We thank you for who you are, and I thank you for being with me today. And I thank you. We are blessed. Thank you. Funding for Side by Side with Nito Cobain is made possible by... Here's to those that rise and shine, to friendly faces doing more than their part, and to those who still enjoy the little things. You make it feel like home. Ashley Home Store. This is home. The Bud Group is a company of everyday leaders making a difference by providing facility solutions through customized janitorial, landscape, and maintenance services. Coca-Cola Consolidated is honored to make and serve 300 brands and flavors locally. Thanks to our teammates. We are Coca-Cola Consolidated, your local bottler.